it made me reevaluate what things that I did in the past because I wanted to do them or because I was certain that it was what God told me to do. Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Patrice um, and I'm just on here living my life. I am a mom. I'm a married mom of three. I turned 40 like a month ago. I live in the DMV. Um, I'm a content creator. I'm a director of communications and marketing for Mega Church, and I own a content studio called Camp Space. And if you are in the DMV, or honestly, I feel like Camp Space is probably one of the most well-known content studio. <laughs> Camp Space was a pioneer in the industry. If you're new here, after this video, take some time to look at some of the other videos. What will you find on this channel? Me living my life. More recently, I've been doing more vlogs because I really enjoy. I enjoy making vlogs. I edit them myself. I shoot them myself on my phone. I use Splice to edit it on my phone. Um, and it allows me to be really, really creative. Shout out to the vloggers that I love watching. Kyra, Amanique, Gina Janine, Aaliyah's Face, um, Peyton, Marie Charles. Like Those are like my top full four. They really inspired me to, to just have some fun making movies because these are vlogs are essentially movies. If you are not new here, you have seen me mention this book, Creative Potential, in a couple of my vlogs. So I was reading this book over the holiday and I finally finished it. In, in one of my previous vlogs, I actually said that I was going to do a review on it. So now it's time for me to do the review because I really enjoyed this book. So I'm going to actually put a screenshot of the book right here, right? So you can actually see it in the, in the right way. This is Creative Potential. Principles for Unleashing Your God-Given Calling. And this is by Luke McElroy, and there was a foreword by Gary Molander. I would have never heard of any of these people before I read this book. Um, let me give you a little background on how I came to read this book. So back in November, middle of November, 2023, I attended the SALT conference, a conference for creative, the creative people in the church. So it's for the people that do the lights, the audio, the production, the social media, the communications, the graphics, all of these types of people came to Nashville at a big church called Brentwood Baptist Church. Never been in a church this big. It was intense, okay? The conference was also intense, but it was really, 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 really good. And I stumbled on this conference, honestly, by just doing a Google search. I think I searched like church communication conferences, church conferences, and I found this one. I had also never been to Nashville, time out. I did a vlog on the trip. So click the link in the description to see the Nashville vlog after you finish watching this. But I had never been to Nashville, so it just made sense. So myself and two of my coworkers who I had such a good time with, we went down to Nashville and we went to the SALT conference, all right? And again, it was massive, but I left that conference feeling so inspired. I had I came back to my to my team members, right? The people that I work with, with a ton of tools, a ton of resources, a ton of insights, and ended up implementing a couple of the things that I learned at the conference, um, like right away, right? So it was definitely worth the money, worth the investment. The ROI was top notch. But I, another reason why the ROI was so good was because I found this book. How did I find the book? I went into the conference bookstore on day one. I think I had some time right after lunch. So I'm going in the bookstore, I'm looking at all the swag, and I'm looking at books. I love buying books. I have a ton of books and I really can't wait till I actually get my bookcase up. What I want this to look like when I do my, you know, talking vlogs, is like all my books behind me because I love books. We're going to get there. I picked up a bunch of books and I ended up settling on two books, right? The first book, which I have right here, is Rethink Communication by Phil Bowdle. Now, I was in one of his sessions at the conference, and so I made sure to purchase his book while I was at the conference. I should have got him to sign it. Literally the following week, I started reading the book. Me and my husband went to the Salamander for his birthday, his 45th birthday sidebar. There's a link to that vlog also in the show description, so make sure you watch that too. <laughs> I'm a shameless plug myself all the time. I'll be honest, when I started reading it, I was not for it. I'm like, what is this? I think I got to like page three. And that is when it clicked to me that Luke McElroy, the person that wrote this book, is also the person that created the SALT community. He's the person that created the SALT conference. It was his brainchild. I had no idea that that was the case when I purchased this book. I had no idea who Luke McElroy was when I signed up for the conference, when I walked into the bookstore, when I purchased this book. No idea. So 
once I realized that the book that I had started reading while on a mini staycation with my husband was written by the person that created the conference that I had just gotten back from and felt so fulfilled from, I was like, oh, wow. Like my whole trajectory and thought process changed behind the book. Seeing the words creative and potential together just um, spoke to me. I'm a pretty creative person. I'm a very creative person. I always have ideas. Every morning I wake up and I try to write down 10 ideas. Whether I implement it or not, I just have it written down. And I always want to reach my potential. And potential is ever growing. It's the scale, right? And so I always want to be working on being the best me, working on being the best version of myself, working on reaching the potential that God sees in me. Those two words together spark my interest. I'm not going to share much because I want you to purchase the book and I want you to read the book or get the audio version of the book. And I also don't have a lot of time because I got to pick my kids up. But I don't think these book reviews are going to be that long because again, I don't want to tell you the book. I want you to go buy the book. So the book starts out giving the reader background on exactly how Luke, the author, came to create the SALT community, which has been around for 10 years, right? So reading something that describes how a creative, a creative used his talent and his creative ability to create this massive business that employs multiple people, that serves multiple people, but most of all, that is God-based, right? This this whole thing, this whole salt thing is for is ministry, is to uplift the Lord. So it gives the reader the background on how he came up with this whole with this whole concept. But the interesting thing is that is that for many years he thought his calling was to create a summer camp. He was really adamant and set on creating this one thing, but through finally surrendering to what God wanted for his life. Even when it was not what he thought he was supposed to do, he was able to find his true God-given calling. And that ended up being the SALT conference. And by him locking in and, and, and hearing God's calling on his life, that's how he was able to reach his creative potential. And when I tell you the SALT conference, every part of it is this massively beautiful experience. It was colorful. It was big, but it was intimate. The keynote speaker was, I think the former president or something of DreamWorks, like the movie. You go to some conferences and you really feel like just a little speck in this massive land of just a bunch of people scurrying around, but it didn't feel like that. It had praise and worship. We prayed. It was just, it was different. And honestly, I cannot wait to go back. And I know I'm kind of going on a tangent here. We supposed to be talking about the book, but I don't know about the book if I didn't go to the conference. So I have to speak to that. Reading that the entire SALT conference, SALT community, which is much more than a conference, wasn't even what he thought he was supposed to do was so like mind blowing to me because so often we get like, we just lock in on what we think we are supposed to do. I've done it many times and I'll talk about that a little later, but we get an idea in our head and because we have the idea, we think it's an idea that God gave us or because someone told us to do it and it makes sense. We think we're supposed to do it. And then we just go full speed ahead and activating and executing. Then you realize, or maybe you don't realize that that's not what you was really supposed to do. That wasn't the recipe that God made for you. Page 25. And this one also, I highlighted like crazy in this book. It's only page 25 and it's like all pink. God doesn't need me to fulfill his purposes in the world. God wants me to play a part in his story. Instead of being an invitation to the destination in that picture God gave me, he was inviting me to private preparation. So I may have been moving on a bus to the beach, but God had some work to do first. Just as an artist uses a chisel on wood to create a beautiful sculpture, God was about to chip away some unnecessary elements of my own character and giftedness. He was about to turn me into the beautiful work of art that he purposed from the beginning of time. With God, some things must go before they can grow. Ooh, reading it again. With God, some things must go before they can grow. In this season, I knew God was using the chisel on my life to make room for the things he was wanting to make new and renew. This was a process that took humility, time, and a lot of faith. While I was stuck behind a gate that wouldn't open, trying to pry my way into a race I wasn't ready to run, 
God was teaching me a profound lesson. Don't try to microwave God's call on your life when his intent might be to use a slow cooker. It's a literal takeaway. Most entrepreneurs, most really successful entrepreneurs didn't hit their stride into their 50s or their 60s. OK, but we live in such a microwave society that we want the quick success. We see it on social media. We think it's supposed to happen that way for us. We do things quickly because we want to be able to put it on social media. We get an idea, we activate, we rush because we've been taught that we have to hustle. We got to get it done. Just do it. But never are we told to be still. Never are we told to let things go off of our plate so that we can make room for what he's telling us and what he's trying to put in our hearts. I have a YouTube uh, video on this too. It's called I Quit My Podcast. Also, link is also in the description. And it's talking about how I just decided to quit my podcast after three and a half years. It was something I wanted to do. I had been thinking about it, but I just couldn't do it because I was like, I have to stick to this. I started it. I'm going to be, it's going to work. And then one day while in, right after breakdown, I said, I can't do this anymore. God was like, girl, let it go. Why? Because I'm telling you to let it go, but also because I have something else for you. So I let it go. I recorded it because I like to document everything. I recorded it and then I let it go. Check. So after that, I slowly started removing things from my plate, my life plate, things that were holding me down and making me not like stuff, like not like life, not enjoy life because I just had all these unnecessary demands on my life trying to be and do all the things. And as I start to take the things off my plate, I feel better. I feel lighter. I have time to talk to God. I have time to truly think about and pray about what it is that he wants from me. So all of that came from just page 25 of the book, period. Should you read the book? Absolutely. Listen to it on audiobooks. Do what you need to do. Why you should read the book. It's easy to read. It truly made me look at how I interact with and listen to God. I was not doing neither before I read this book, okay? but I am doing it now. I have to admit, it's a little hard for me because it's like, what am I, do he hear me? Another thing I liked about this book is, is that it made me reevaluate what things that I did in the past because I wanted to do them or because I was certain that it was what God told me to do. And I'm gonna give y'all two very clear examples of that. My business, Camp Space, while I boasted on it earlier, it never really reached the potential that I thought it should have reached the potential of. But as I was reading this book, I thought, well, maybe it's because it's not, I never talked to God about it. I never consulted with God. I said I was going to have a co work space. And then I just started having events and I started building all these partnerships and trying to have all these relationships with people. But I didn't say, hey, God, is this what I'm supposed to do? What do you think about this? Instead, I was like, God, please make this happen. Please, God, make this happen. Please make this happen. It happened. But when I think about its potential, again, that word, I just don't know if it was what it was supposed to be for me. Because let's be clear, and this was also in the book, God does not want mediocrity, mediocrity, mediocrity. Everything God touches, he wants to be great. Everything God touches, he wants to be great. That doesn't mean that you can't start something and then get better so that you're the best. I'm not saying that. But I do think there are instances where we are trying so hard to make something work when it's just not for us. It's not the calling on our life, but for whatever reason, family obligations, things that you've seen, peer pressure, unrealistic expectations you have of yourself, you think you're supposed to do it and you just keep trying. And it's like, baby, this ain't working. Let it go. Make room for what is supposed to be for you. Um, so the first example again was my business. Not really sure that's what, where I was supposed to go when I was supposed to go there. But then also... If you've listened to the podcast, if you haven't, it's the link, or you can just watch the videos, scroll on down. I have a playlist, Shades of Content Podcast. I went down this path of wanting to franchise the space because someone said to me, you should franchise. I want to open one in Baltimore, so you should franchise. So I went down this path. I spent $20,000 and then some doing all the things when, aside from me not even talking to God, I didn't have no real facts or figures to back this thing other than a couple pe people saying that's a good idea you live and you learn i will never make that same mistake twice i'm going to listen i'm going to talk to you god and make sure that it's what i'm supposed to do 
Another reason why I love this book was because it gives you the blueprint on how you can find your own creative calling and live up to the potential that God set for you. Tons of tips in here that you can apply to your life. So first you have to be unique, then you have to be excellent, then you have to be able to collaborate and be collaborative, and you gotta be contagious. So those four things are what's gonna allow you to reach um, your creative potential and live up to the calling that God has in your life. And Luke in this book breaks every, every part of that four down. Everything is back with Bible verses and Bible stories. So you can truly connect the book with the word. Like he's not saying things because he thinks it's facts. He's not saying things because it sounds good. The things that he is saying, there is a Bible verse attached to it. And he breaks down the Bible story so that you can not only understand it in the Bible, but you can see how it pertains to you very specifically. You can put yourself in the shoes of the character. I love this book so much, y'all. I broke it. Okay, look, I broke it. Like, I don't know if you can see all the things, like writing in it. I mean, it got intense, okay? I wrote, create the good that allows others to see God. Sometimes it's not about you being a star. Sometimes it's about you creating the great things that allow other people to see how great God is. I wrote this down as a note to myself. By not stepping up and using my God-given talents to build and lead a real team at my job, I am hindering the spiritual growth of others because they can't learn through the church in which I work. Because I was definitely in a space of just like, you know what, I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna just do what I can, do what they allow me to do because I was frustrated, but I'm supposed to be there. So personal application for me, after reading this book, I'm gonna work on building a real relationship with God. He is who I should counsel before, during, and after all things. I'm also in the middle of a fast right now. Now, I didn't know I was gonna do this fast when I finished reading the book, but just so happens that here we are. So I've been just automatically having to make more time to talk to God because I don't have the distractions. I haven't been on Instagram. I'm not getting coffee. Um, all the things that distract you, I don't do it. The only time I watch vlogs is if I'm on the Stairmaster. I can only watch vlogs when I'm working out. Um, so I've just had a lot of time to talk to God. One of the biggest things that I got from this book and one of the biggest things that I'm taking with me as I go on is I've totally humbled myself. And I'm realizing how mediocrity has been a part of my life on many occasions because I did what I wanted to do and not what God wanted me to do. You know, I had conversations with myself or my husband about why can't this be great? Why can't I do this? Why can't this blow up? Not because I want the fame or the clout. It's just I'd be seeing the potential. It ain't, I don't know if those things were for me because what's for you is going to be great. God makes all things great and he doesn't want us to be basic. That was also in the book. I don't think Luke said basic, but he don't want us to be medium. He don't want us to be mid. He wants us to be great. And he's given us all of these unique traits, right? So that we can do exactly what he put us on this earth to do, whether it's you're a teacher, whether you're a statistician, whether you work on Wall Street, whether you're a model, models are built the way that they're built to model. Whether you're Beyonce, it was no coincidence. And I've said this, I said this in my vlog about my birthday vlog, my 40th birthday vlog. It wasn't a coincidence that Beyonce's grandmother was a seamstress who taught her mom how to sew. Her mom was a hairdresser who could then do the hair and make the clothes. Her dad was a professional who was just eager to do something entrepreneurial. And she had all these friends who could sing and they all lived in the same area together. That's not a coincidence. When God put the makings of Beyonce together, he knew she was going to be a star. He built her for that. And everybody in her life made sure that it happened. So how about what if you could take a second and just really hone in on what you know is for you from God and you make it known to everybody in your life and they all conspire to make sure it happens? How powerful is that? And then you do it for them. And y'all are just all working in your best. I also think that we should challenge ourselves to question when we feel something that we think we should do or when someone tells us that they want to do. We need to ask ourselves and we need to ask them, have you talked to God about it? Have you read the word about it? That is it. I hope that you gleaned something from this review. If you want me to do more reviews, let me know in the description. I'll tell you what I am reading next, baby. Sheila Johnson. 
Walk Through Fire, y'all. Only on page 68. It's about 250 pages. It's a page turner. I can't put it down. I'm taking it with me to the playground with my kids, okay? It's so good. If you don't know, Sheila Johnson is the co-founder of BET, Black Entertainment Television. The book, she's also the owner of The Salamander. And if you watch The Salamander vlog, you saw that I bought this book while I was there. Hope you enjoyed it. Get the book. I'm going to try to get an affiliate link. I got to get my Amazon store set up. So hopefully that'll be in the description too. If you know or follow Luke, please share the link to this review with him via email or DM him. I know he's on Instagram. I also put his Instagram in the description. Let me know again if you like the review and if there are other books that you want me to read. I read for pleasure. I read for enlightenment. I read for education. I read for self-care. I'm so happy you watched this video. And everything you need is in the show notes. Happy reading. I know reading, I feel like reading doesn't happen as much because we have podcasts, because we have vlogs, because we have so many other things, but reading is fundamental. As cliche as that sounds, when you read, you get smarter, you know more, you're more confident. If you have kids, make sure you're reading to your kids. I'll be back next week with another video. I think that's it. Have a good one. Peace.